everyone, Paul ISM. Welcome to another inbox review. Today I'm going to be reviewing uh, the Special Hobby 132 Tempest Mark V. Um, big fan of the Tempest Typhoon, but a couple in the past. I did recently get rid of my 124th Airfix Typhoon. A little bit big, a little bit overwhelming to build on the bench. Although it's a lovely kit, I had some beautiful aftermarket. I thought I'll sell this on and I'll buy this instead. Tempest Typhoon, similar looking aircraft in a way. Um, and it's a late war scheme, ID, Invasion Stripes on, which I absolutely love. So I saw this by uh, Special Hobby come out last year, I think it was late last year. I've seen a few reviews of it and it looks to be good. From all accounts it seems to be the best kit Special Hobby's ever released. Now for those who don't know, Special Hobby produce short run kits. So they're made on short run moulds, so they're not the most accurate, not accurate, that's the wrong word, polished or flawless moulds so you do have a bit of work to do the last one I built was the 48 scale furry firefly drone and it went together okay but there were some flaws in it that need attention so don't be thinking you get the Tamiya kit because you're not it's not a shake and bake kit, it's not all going to fit together perfectly there's going to be flaws on the plastic uh, but by all accounts it's going to be a fantastic kit now Special Hobby and CMK the resin producer are both owned by MPM Productions I think it's MPM Productions I think it is in the Czech Republic so you've got the Special Hobby kit and the CMK resin in there as well as well as Edouard Photo Etch uh, decals and what looks to be Montex masks but they might not be but they do look like them a lot now you can get the same kit in just the plastic in the box and that is £44 but for me the extra £20 is well worth it to get all these extras in the box. Box art is stunning, it's depicting the Tempest shooting down a V1 flying bomb. Uh, absolutely beautiful box art and I will hopefully be trying to keep that if we can and I'd like to get a print of that if possible. It's absolutely stunning, really really nice. Um, so all round, from all accounts it looks really a great kit so we're probably best to dive straight in have a look at the kit itself. Uh, stick around because the ending I'm hoping to have my little boy James on for the first time uh, first time I've had him on camera on one of our videos, so hopefully you see him in the outro at the end as well. So let's jump straight in and go and have a look at the kit. So it's kit number 32052. Like I said, it's a high-tech kit. They also do another release without all the extras in, so you literally get the kit itself. And that's about £44, uh, but for me that extra little bit of money with this oh, is worth it. What you get in there is absolutely fantastic. So. Excellent box art, absolutely beautiful. Got the Tempest in a banking uh, manoeuvre roll by looking down to just shot down uh, a V1 uh, flying bomb, which is absolutely amazing. I believe this was our very last uh, prop fighter aircraft and uh, a pretty formidable machine by all accounts. The box art is absolutely stunning and I will certainly be keeping that. Beautiful, beautiful box art. So it's a decent sized box, it's a good. 18 inches uh, by 12 by 3 so it's a good box it's a nice sturdy box as well so it's not one of these flimsy ones that's going to fall to bits there's the price on the side I paid £68.60 they must be price set because everywhere sells it for that price now it's a bit hard to show on the overhead so I shall show you on the side so on the side you get resin main wheels two stars and a tail wheel uh, detailed resin and photo etch interior parts two gun sights laser cut HGW microfiber seat belts um, Pre-cut mask for canopy cockpit and other clear parts. So, absolutely fantastic. I've got a few other bits on the way to add to the build as well, and hopefully it'll become a real nice build. I plan to build this for the RAF GB the Tom Facebook at the minute, run by uh, Mike Modart and Sam. I don't know Sam's YouTube name. Do apologise, Sam, if you're watching. Uh, Czech Republic kit, like I say, CMK Special Hobby, same company, different divisions of the company, and like we said, it's kit number three two zero. Five, two. So there we go. Let's have a quick look at the box art overhead where you can see it a little bit better. Excuse the glare. Absolutely beautiful box art. Whoever does their box art really does have a flair. Like I said, but a couple of these in the past, one was a good while ago when I got back into the hobby and it was a big mistake. And then fairly recently, a couple of years ago, I built the 148 Firefly drone, uh, red and cream colour. Nice little kit, wasn't the easiest, but it went together fine, no problem at all. I really can't complain. The short run kit, so you should expect that when you're getting it. You are not getting a shake and bake kit. You're certainly not getting a Tamiya kit, by all accounts. Now, we pop off the box, top, and we're met with all the clear sprues, the plastic sprues themselves, 
and a little special hobby card which houses all the resin, photo edits, the belts, the master decals, etc. etc. So we'll take that off, leave it to one side, we'll get to that a little bit later on. Now all the parts are in one bag, which is a bit of a pet hate of mine, but it's not the end of the world. And there's our instructions as well. So if you want to have a little look at the info, there's a little bit at the bottom there. If you want to read it, pause it, usual, you know the score. There we go, and we'll put that to one side again as well. And we'll put the box. The box can go there so I can put all the sprues back in. So we'll put the clear parts to one side as well. And we'll get all the plastic parts out the bag in one go, unceremoniously. Out they come. Just one of those things. I'm not a big fan of this, but a few companies do it, and it is just one of those things. So, what we'll do is we'll start with that one, we'll just put all these to one side there, excuse me, there we go. Right, so first sprue, and we have the nose, prop spinner, propellers, few of the components, etc, etc. Now the first thing to see, and it's something we're going to zoom in to have a look at as well first, impress me about the kit, is that beautiful riveting detail. That is over the entire aircraft, wherever there's riveting, that is there. Absolutely fantastic. That's going to look really good when it holds a wash. Obviously, you're going to lose some of it, putting the uh, fuselage halves together so you're going to need a re-riveter and take your time doing it, I've got several that's a big part of this kit as you can see we do have flash, like I said it's a short run kit so we are going to get flash, there are going to be mist moulds well not maybe mist moulds but we're going to have some um, flaws here and there and as seen right there yeah I thought that was mould release but it's actually not I didn't think it would be, but I think get the white bounce back. Give me a sec. Oh, the white bounce is gone. Give me a second. There we are. So I'll zoom back in again. So on the props, there is quite a bit of marking all on the top, but it's not physically there, it's in the plastic. So a quick buff over, a little bit of a sand, no problem at all. There is a bit of flash along the leading edges. It's just one of those things, it's how it's going to be on this kit. It's the, the drawback to a short run kit. But other detail is great. It's a little bit vague in places. Um, but it looks like we've got two sets of props, have we? Yep, we have two different profiles of prop. Spinner looks good. No problems there really, like I say. As long as you look at the kit for what it is. You're not going to have any dramas whatsoever. So it does look, at first glance, a little bit rough and ready. But with some work, we should have no problem there. So some nice parts on there, very cool. This one we've got the exhaust. and this is one piece I have uh, built them up, uh, at the market for. They've molded in half. Uh, they're going to need gluing in. They're already hollow. But if you glue each one of those, you're going to have to do every seam on that. And to get into each one of those, it's going to be a little bit of a pain. So I chose to get some aftermarket. Um, I think I bought CMK aftermarket exhaust for it from Hannon. So they should be here very soon. And again, other parts are great. We've got the seat. Obviously, we're going to replace that with the resin seat in a little bit. Uh, we've got the interpretation of the engine itself. I really hope you can't see a lot of that because it's not the greatest. So we'll come into the close-up cam. But look, so that's the interpretation of the engine. So it's not the best, but I think through the front of this thing you really cannot see much. We're going down to small parts. We've got a nice detail. Again, not too bad. We've got a few parts of L and R on, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Have a look through the instructions. And again, there's the exhaust we're talking about. So if I flip them around, you can see. Molded in half. They should glue together fine. Shouldn't have any problems at all. Do have location tabs, which is really good. Uh, pointed out by another reviewer. It's like, holy crap. It is quite a rarity in short run. But to do each one of the seams on the exhaust is, um, yeah, 
it's going to be a pain in the backside. You probably just could get some wet and dry in there, um, but for the sake of a resin exhaust, I went out and bought those. And again, no problems there at all. All the parts are crystal molded, any raised or recessed details, nice. Got the bulkhead for the back of the aircraft, which I think is replaced by photo etch, this part here. Um, so that shouldn't cause any problems at all. Seats are really good, even though we are replacing it with a resin seat, which is absolutely amazing. So no problems there again at all. Next part we've got control surfaces, so we've got the rudder. It's literally just the rudder, the rudder in half, so they're going to need gluing together. Um, we've got the landing gear covers, again beautifully riveted. We can come and look at that. Really, really nice. There we go, we've got the fabric detail on the rudder. Which again is really good. Really crisply done. Good little bits and bobs, and like I say, everything that needs rivets is very nicely depicted. And again, no dramas there at all. A little bit of clean up here and there, a little bit of a polish. The inside detail of the gear doors gets to focus. Again, beautiful. You get that with a wash, that is going to look absolutely amazing. It's going to look absolutely beautiful. So again, Top Mark's uh, special hobby, fantastic. Now we've got elevators, horizontal stabilizers, drop tanks, uh, bombs, etc. And again, detail is lovely. So we've got the scribe detail, which is really good actually. So they're going to look really nice. Obviously on the bombs as well. A little bit of marring and light surface scratches there but you'll soon get rid of that then onto the elevators and the stabilizers horizontal stabilizers they are beautiful riveting details amazing again in half so you have to glue them together a little bit of work but nothing too drastic at all a little bit of clamping glueage etc so again beautiful detail very very nice people are saying this is the best special hobby kit and I can see why the surface detail is amazing it really does catch your eye all the way through. Is that better than me holding it up? I think it is, isn't it? There we go, that's a bit better. Look how I zoom in a tad more. Let's have a look. There we go. Probably better than me holding it up. So, yeah, you got the bombs, drop tanks, horizontal stabilizers, elevators, blah, blah, blah. And detail. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. So, top marks there. On to, we've got the carburetor intake. Uh, we have a quick overview, we'll have a look, we've got another bulkhead, wheels, landing gear, um, legs, intakes, grills, uh, more struts, looks like the rear landing gear, uh, we've got various bits and bobs, don't know what they are, wheels, and again all beautifully moulded and ca uh, cast, beautifully moulded, absolutely fantastic. We go around and have a quick look at all the parts, let's go through them all slowly. They are very, very nice. Even the wheels got the flats moulded in, which is good. And again, you go through the smaller parts like this. Really nicely done, no problems with those at all. Very, very nice. Carburetor intake there. Again, the wheels are the flat in. Got a couple of different types of wheels. I think it's just, no, I think we only got one type in the actual resin part of the landing gear legs themselves the rest of the components so on and so forth this very very finely um, textured surface absolutely beautiful and what will be the seat back on the plastic seat which is really good very very nice the resin seat's beautiful and what look to be uh, cockpit uh, footrests the actual parts that sit on the bottom of the cockpit itself Beautifully made, absolutely phenomenal. Can't say that word lately, phenomenal. 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 I give up. So, onto this, loads of little tiny parts. So, we've got the cannons, we've got instrument panels, we've got uh, adjustment uh, knobs, we've got the yoke for the uh, control stick, the uh, framework for all the cockpit, radio gear. All sorts of stuff on this. Absolutely beautiful stuff. <laughs> really, really nice. And they are very, very well moulded. Um, that 
doesn't look like a short run mould at all. That is really, really good. Very nice. We'll have a quick tour of those. We start at the top. Just go across them all slowly. I mean, these little control boxes, these are absolutely beautiful. Across these are the side walls, well, the frame for the cockpit itself. Cannons. There we go through the centre. The yokes and what have you. Absolutely beautiful. Very, very nice. I've not looked this close at these parts. And these little bits and bobs are absolutely stunning. Well impressed by that. Again, these little tiny bits. Very, very fine piece of plastic. Really, really nicely done. All the way across. Absolutely beautiful. I just like the texture of this. Real good. Instrument panels, which are replaced by Photowitch, I believe. I've got a Yahoo set anyway. If you've not seen the Yahoo instrument panels, yeah, Y A H U, go and have a look. I've got one for this on the way, and they are stunning, absolutely beautiful. Right, we've got the fuselage halves. Again, just beautifully riveted. Panel lines are like nigh on perfect. They are not too big. They're going to hold a wash really well. I'm just going to flood it with paint. But overall, this texture is a bit ropey in places. But a little bit of work here and there, it's not going to look bad at all. But you certainly need to be careful about losing the surface detail because you can have a lot of work putting it back in otherwise. But the rivets are just divine. They really are beautiful. There's a few flaws in places where they're not quite perfect. There's one right there. See there, it goes slightly off. But it's not the end of the world, it's just a slight flaw. We'll, do. we'll pick one half, it will go on this one. And we'll just have a little look, and I say, look at that surface detail. Absolutely beautiful. The rivets are uh, gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful riveting, really is. And it's across that whole fuselage right the way across. As you see, the panel lines are not trench like, they're just, it's perfect in my eyes. It's absolutely stunning. So fantastic, so you've got two halves, interior, we've got a bit of detail inside, which is nice. It's actually really nice, to be honest. So again, nice little um, extras and the same on that side as well. Very, very cool. Even in the wheel bay at the back, there's a little bit of surface detail. So top marks, check the pins there. Might need a bit of tidy up here and there. One well, the cockpit there, but I don't think you'll see that there. I've, you know what, I've not even noticed any ejector pin marks anywhere yet at all Do you know what <laughs> that's a good point Paul let's go and have a look I've not spotted any in any prominent places wow that's really good yeah inside yeah very well thought out I've not seen one see a problem there look there's a small one there as well wow didn't even see any very very good very cool you know what I've not noticed any anywhere they're gonna be a problem that's the first one I've seen inside the cockpit right now the biggest screw of the lot which really shows the size of this thing is the wing so the wingspan is quite impressive it did say the size on the box um, if I roughly have a look it looks to be about 15 and a half inch wingspan so to me that's manageable. The 24 thing, oh my god, it was like another another four or five inches long. It was huge, ridiculous. But this surface detail on this thing is just amazing. I'm gonna keep going on about it because it's beautiful. Really is beautiful. Um It's just everywhere. Make sure you get your paint on nice and thin on this, don't be going over overboard. We well details nice inside, you have a look there on the close-up. You build these up in sections, uh, like four or five parts per wheel bank, and it's going to look really, really good. So it's the same both sides. All the ejector pins are inside, no problem at all. There's no look for sink marks. I can't even see any sink marks anywhere. I've seen worse. Well, oh, there's one there. Yeah, we've got one. Right there, there's a sink mark. Let's see if we can get to catch it. There you go, just there. 
Right there, that's one. One in the opposite place as well. But other than that, not that I've seen more Synchron contact me, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, have a quick look around this. So, as you see, that's the upper wing surfaces. Grab a face and see, there we go. Look at that surface detail. Absolutely beautiful. Like I say, if you're looking for a 32 scale kit to start with, don't buy this. Pick something a bit easier. Go for a Revel, one of the newer tool Revels. Probably, it's not going to go to get like a Tammy, but it won't be as difficult as this to assemble. But I don't know if it's going to be that bad looking at it. And I've seen somebody assemble it with tape, dry, like dry assembly, and it looked to go together fairly well. But that beautiful detail is truly stunning. When that's painted up and a washing it, that's kind of look. Amazing, my Jack Russell's going nuts. No idea why, but he is. And then we've got the lower half as well, and again, you've got all this stunning detail on the ailerons, the flaps, all the way through. Nicely actuated, uh, the actuators are nicely defined. Beautiful. All the way across and through. Really, really cool. So there you go. So for the plastic parts, they look great. What they're going to go like is a completely different story. And um, I don't expect anything that's going to go together with no problem at all. Um, but overall, it looks very, very promising. So we've got clear parts. So we go with the front screen first. Let's have a looky see. Yeah, not the clearest. There's a little bit of distortion on the front. Can you see? Yeah, there you go. Can you see that? We've got a little bit of distortion there, so it's not the clearest, but I get that a little bit of a polish with some Tamiya compounds. I'm not one of these dippers. I think that's a technique that's dead, personally. I'd rather give it a little bit of a polish up. But overall, the clarity is not too bad. Even the distortion and magnification isn't that bad. But the optically, the glass isn't the clearest and you can see what I write there but it's certainly passable I've seen a lot worse like I say a little bit of work with the Tamiya compounds would help bring that up we've got the main canopy itself which suffers the same optical flaws as the front screen and we do have a little bit of marking on the top of it where it's been in that bag, but that'll soon buff out. Like I said, I've been going up my canopies lately with Tamiya Polishing Compound if they needed it. No problem at all. Other clear parts, so we've got uh, wingtip markers, other parts, yeah, they, they sort of the same, they're just not the most optically clear, but overall, I've seen worse, I uh, have seen a lot better as well. But overall they're not too bad. The riveting detail on the main canopy is quite nice. You can see inside the floor is more than outside. But like I said, I've seen a lot worse. It's a short run kit, you do need to remember that. And uh, I think give it a good polish up and it'll come out nice. So not too bad to be fair. Now I'm going to pop this back in the bag. It's going to be a long review this by the look of it because we've got a lot to get through. Let's pop that in there. So overall, plastic parts, yeah, they seem to be pretty good. Now, we've got two bags of resin. That's what comes on this card. I'm going to try and get them off. I've oh, got stapled on there well. Let's get the staple off. Hate staples. I've got this mad aversion to staples. I'm not that I'm scared of them. Ah, but staple, staple phobia. It's just I hate them near plastic parts. So they're actually pain on the backside. So we've got all the resin parts, we've got the photo etch and the mask and the decals in there as well. Decals look really good actually. We'll get to those in a bit. So we're just going to have a look at the resin. We're not going to go through every single part. So I'm going to put them out on the bench, going to zoom that out a little bit. So we can have a little look. Because we'll literally be here all day, but we're going to lay some of them out. 
we'll pick out any that are interesting. We've got the floorboards, resin yoke, control surfaces are there, really good, really, really nice. Very well cast. A little bit of clean up on the yoke, you have to get out of the centre, but not too much of a drama to do. Very nice. We got what looks like gun sight, uh, control wheel, a few little bits and bobs, and again, a little bit of cleanup is going to be required, but not too bad. Remember, safety with resin, guys. Wear gloves, a mask, it only has to be a dust mask. Don't be breathing the dust and try and keep it off your skin as well. The cannons, they're not hollowed out, so you're going to need a little bit of work with a pin vise to get them hollowed out, but the cannons, they're replicated quite nicely. Not too bad at all. Obviously CMK is a resin manufacturer and they do produce some very, very nice uh, resin parts. Now we have a part snapped off, which I'm assuming shouldn't be snapped off. So if that's the case, we'll be on to CMK about that and get that rectified. To me, that doesn't look like it should be snapped off, and it is. If we can glue it on, which resin you quite often can, get it glued back on with no real problem, we will, but if not, I'll be after a new part. And we've got the other part of the gun sight too. Because there's two options, two different gun sights. So again, apart from that broken part, which is a bit of a shame. Not too bad. We should keep that in mind and contact CNK. And I think we've got some other barrel tips there as well. Obviously for different variants. So there's one bag of resin. The other one's got all the bigger parts in. So yeah, we'll, we can see how well CMK's customer service is this time. So I will contact them today. Today is the 2nd of October. You can see it's 24 in the afternoon. It's been a busy old day. I've got this to review. It's a Friday, so I'm going to try and get this edited oh, and uploaded if I can, but I've got a live show in a few hours, so I don't know if I'll be able to. Um, so yeah, 2nd of September. I'll fire off an email when I'm done with this, and we'll see how long it takes for them to respond. So we've got a little bit of plastic uh, resin flash in there. We're not bothered about. We've got two main wheels. Two smaller ones, one real tyre, uh, wheel itself, and the seat. Now the seat is beautiful. For a resin seat, that's definitely one of the best I've seen. Absolutely lovely. The cushioned in the back, we've got the stitching at the top. Absolutely lovely. And it's very, very nice detail. And into the back as well, absolutely stunning really is but I'll be fair the plastic one didn't look that bad at all so nice resin seat we've got the rear landing gear uh, tyre and wheel with a flattener it's a Dunlop tyre you can almost read the tyre size there to be honest as well again it's a little bit a little bit ropey as a cast but it's not too bad at all certainly passable and we've got two different Landing gear wheels, which I'm not sure why at all. We pick one of each. Should have a look. So one is slightly bigger than the other. This one again, Dunlop tyre, nicely uh, recessed, raised lines around the edge. Tyre size. You've got the moulded flat in there as well. The wheel in the centre, and the same the other side as well. Very very nicely detailed. So very nice. Bit of cast flash off again, another Dunlop tyre, similar type of wheel, slightly different resin. This as well, a bit darker, and the same detail on the other side. So, while we get two sets, I'm not 100% sure. We'll have a little looky through the instructions in a little bit, and it will tell us why. So, there's the two bags of resin. Now, if we grab the other little bag. The decals and instructions to go through. So this bag has the HGW fabric belts, which are great. Don't get the paper ones, the paper ones absolutely suck. They just fall to bits. The fabric ones I've had much more success with. And it's not labelled it, but it looks like a Montex mask to me. Got a sheet of acetate for the gun sight. And the mask itself. Now I've ordered um, some of the P mask for the roundels. First time ever spraying them on really. So we've got the mask set as you can see for the wheels front screen and the rear canopy as well and obviously all of the different lights and bits and bobs are on there these are vinyl a couple of different sizes there 
So again, a nice addition, saves a lot of time. So that's really going to help with your build. You've got the HCW belts, which are lovely. So you got all the surface detail printed on there. Cut them off a pair of scissors, follow the instructions, folding everything through. And you have no drama at all. There you go. And then the seat belt PE as well. For everything in there, so there's all the clasp buckles, other bits and bobs, and a few other various bits and bobs for the aircraft itself. I thought there's more PE with this, I was wrong because I said there was an instrument panel. I'm getting confused. I've just bought another kit, <laughs> get confused with that. And you got the acetate for the uh, gun sight there as well, so another nice piece to cut out. So, yeah, there you go, not all the massive amount of PE, which probably please a few people. I would have liked a little bit more, I'm not gonna lie, but. Maybe the kit doesn't need it because it doesn't warrant having it. But I've ordered a few bits of aftermarket. I thought I'd order wheels. I haven't ordered wheels. That's for a different kit. <laughs> Getting confused with I order because I've ordered two very similar kits from Special Hobby. Um, so, last little bag. And we've got our decals. Now, as you say, I've not looked at any of this because they're still attached to the staples. So not anymore, so I've not even looked at any of these close up, I've been dying to. There we go. So we've got sten stencils, number one. So you've got a lot of cockpit uh, placards for inside, and obviously stencils for the outside as well. Now it says they're printed by Edward. Um, whether that means a cartograph, I don't know, but I don't think it is. I think these are actually Edward's own in-house decals but they don't look too bad there's a bit of excess carrier film to remove on quite a few of them but I would take off uh, things like this and that part there I'll be cutting out a lot of that carrier film but they look really good they're all in register they're all legible as well you can read them all the numbers are there you can see them properly so not too bad at all like I said there's all the placards then we've got the roundels, which like I say, I've replaced with a P-mask roundel set. Hate the way those bits of paper leave all that on the surface. Really do. It's a gripe of mine, that is. Really is. But the roundels, not too bad. Not the best I've seen. Really don't like the way it leaves that texture on those decals. Are that bloody paper. The uh, tail registry markings. Nice, yeah, not too bad at all. They're not overly thick, they should lay down really well. So, not a problem at all, but I don't think we'll be using those at all because I've got the ones to spray. We shall see, but again, no problem at all. And then the actual individual aircraft markings. So, we've got all the ID numbers, a couple of cool logos on the side. Instrument panel, uh, dials and what have you. A couple of swastikas, stickers. Helps with kill markings. Strange where that one's cut off. And some very, very small decals on the side. But overall they don't look bad. All in register again. All perfectly legible. So no problems there. So again, the decals look good. Um, the only ones we can say about is the round doors where they've had all that paper stuck to them but that's by the by and I think they'd still lay down nicely for you anyway. I'm gonna pop them back in their bag. Hate leaving decals out. And there we go, so just the instructions left and we are done. Now that look through the instructions, they look absolutely fantastic. The first glance they look a bit oh my god what are they? As you get used to them, they actually don't look too bad. At all. So like I say, you got all the information on the front, a nice bit of info about the aircraft. So the wingspan was 12.5 metres, uh, top speed was um, 685 kilometres an hour, so what's that, like 400 and... 450 miles an hour is it? Something like that. It's got the 420mm cannons on it as well, Hisp I'll take it the Hispanos. So, your normal sprue layouts inside, you've got your legend symbols down the bottom. 
what to do, what not to do. Any parts not used are crossed off. So obviously we know we have duplicate parts um, because we've got resin. Oh, we're not using that either. Weird. Okay, fair enough. Thought we would have been, but we're not. Okay, doc. Um, so yeah, anything not used as a cross through, and obviously we know some of the parts aren't going to be used. Now, on first look, you look at the instructions, and you're like, wow, they look really busy. But when you start to look at them, they actually start to make sense. So you got all the extra parts at the top. So there's a resin and photo etch, just so you know. Clear parts and so on and so forth. Um, as you look at the instructions, you've got all the part layouts, and they do clearly depict where they go by the look of it. They don't look too problematic at all. And then you've got the colour call out, so B, G, B, J, and they point to the individual parts, as you can see. So there shouldn't be any drama there at all. Like you said, when you first look, you're like, wow, that's really busy. Once you get a head around it, you look at it and think, actually, that, they're really good, very good. So you've got bare plastic layout there for all the parts to stick on, then all the parts aren't, and any decal placement shown there, any colour call out shown there. So they are actually very, very good instructions. Hopefully, they are fairly accurate and they shouldn't cause much drama. Now, that looks to be the part that was snapped off. So I'm going to need new one of those. So we're definitely going to test out the customer service and see what that's like. And as you go through, it's, it's the same all the way through. You've got your paint call out, plastic part, assembly, uh, any decals. It's clear. It's busy, but it's clear. This is a bit confusing. I'm not going to admit that, uh, lie about that. Definitely a little tag confusion. There's about 400 different red bits here. So you need to put it in, swing it around, etc. So it's definitely going to be something to pay attention to. Um, but overall, I think it looks really good. There's your seat belt assembly there. That can be a bit confusing. Without a shadow of a doubt. But overall, I don't think we're going to have any drama. It's got the nose section there being assembled. Yeah, no problem at all. Like I say, the engine you can't see anything of anyway through the front. The only thing I don't like is the colour call outs right in the middle of the instruction book. It's a bit annoying. Uh, they're using Gun Sanyo Cut Mr. Colour and Aqueous, so that's a good and it shows Alclad for the different things. And obviously the instructions for the uh, seat belts are there as well. So it's a nice touch. It's a bit odd laid out putting those there. I'd rather those at the front rather than page seven, but they are there. And then we're on to the wheelbase. Like I say, several components build the wheelbase up. Like I said, they do look highly detailed. You look at a lot of those parts in there, and it's going to build up absolutely stunningly detailed. So it should look pretty good. And then the fuselage assembly, wings, control surfaces, cannons, so on and so forth. Right through to the clear parts. Templates, rear landing gay, gay, <laughs> rear landing bay, uh, bombs, drop tanks, canopy, the uh, propeller, exhausts. Now, should they have a join in them? Don't know. By the looks of it, they actually do. So, if you are gluing them together, you should be alright anyway. But if not, there's aftermarket parts I've ordered, which I think will look better anyway. So, I've got those on the way. And then a colour call out. So, overall, those instructions, while they look really busy and quite like, oh my god, they're actually not that bad at all. So, you shouldn't really have any dramas with that at all. Um, you've got one, two, three, four, five schemes. Yeah, so quite a lot in there. First one is uh, 150 Wing, Castle Camp, Steuben, 1944. That's that one, so you've got your Invasion ID, Stripes, Yellow Nose, quite like that one, that's probably going to be the one I'll do, I'll look through this, and I did kind of pre-decide, because I like Invasion Stripes on the uh, the late war aircraft, they look absolutely amazing. Second one is 486 Squadron, um, <laughs> so I'm reading the foreign side of it, duh, let me read the English side. So you got 150 uh, wing, Castle Camps, April 1944, and then the second one is 486 Squadron, uh, BF-152, Fasberg, Germany, May 1945. So, yeah, a couple of nice schemes there. 
Then we've got uh, one two two wing, Fasberg, Germany, May 1945 again. Definitely need the invasion stripes in my uh, opinion, ID stripes. Uh, number three squadron, Copenhagen, Denmark, June 45. And the last one is number three squadron, RAF, Hopston, Germany, April 45 again as well. Now each one has the colour card at the bottom. So your dark green, ocean grey, medium sea grey, yellow, black, so on and so forth. Standard colours. And the same for basically all of them. Ocean grey, medium sea grey, sky, etc. What is sky on that? Oh, the tail band. I see. Very nice. So yeah, that's the one for me. The red shadow of it out. I think that's definitely the one that I'll do. But great instructions. Fantastic. I look a little bit overwhelmed when you first look at them. But overall, shouldn't be any drama whatsoever. Okay, are you okay? I don't know. You don't know? What? What have you seen? Me. What is it? A door. A door? A door. What's a door? Me. Well, is your makeup done? Me. How about your hair? Me. Are you all done? Me. Are you ready? We're going to film this. Are you ready? Do you a biscuit? Me. You want a biscuit? Me. There you go. Then you have that while I do this. Okay? There we go. i got James with me. First time he's been on my videos with me. Hopefully you'll see him a bit more. Hopefully this biscuit will keep him busy whilst I'm filming this. So there we go. This is a review of the Special Hobby 32 scale uh, Tempest. <laughs> um, don't, don't be laughing. Um, okay. Don't be laughing. <laughs> right, so there you go. From me and James. Hello, yeah, there's the camera. From me and James, this is Special Hobby 132 Tempest Mark V. Uh, it looks to be an amazing kit. I'm really looking forward to building it. This little monkey's laughing. Um, as you see by the review, you get a lot in the box for the money. Seventy, sorry, sixty-eight pounds. Absolute bargain for what you get in that box. And I'm looking forward to building it for Mike and Sam's um, oh. uh, RFGB, which is ongoing right now. So yeah. I'm probably going to start it this weekend. Yeah. I had a few parts show up. My CMK resin exhaust showed up. Can I hold them? Yeah, thought so. Yeah. And I have my P masks show. Up. And also my book on the Tempest show up as well. Oh, the book. Isn't it? Can I have them before you break them? Thank you. So I'm already in set for the build now. So really looking forward to getting this going. Um, so you should see a build thread start very, very soon. So there we go. Like I said, it looks a superb kit. If you're thinking about getting one, go and get one. Uh, I'm sure James will buy one at some point as well, won't you? Do you think you'll get one? You're too busy eating that biscuit. Baba. Yeah, the Baba. But anyway, yeah. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you liked the video. Um, if you got any comments or uh, questions or what have you, comment down below, like the video, and subscribe to the channel as well. So for myself and James, we'll see you next time. Wave bye-bye, James. Probably won't wave, but you might do. Two engrossing this biscuit. So bye-bye, guys. See you soon. Say bye-bye. Wave. Bye-bye.